Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to talk about HTML links and navigation. As you might imagine, these concepts change a little bit when we add JavaScript underneath Live View and the concept of Live Views into the mix. It's going to be an informative episode, so let's get started. Before we do anything else, we're going to need a project, so I'm just going to type Mix Phoenix New Links, and we'll let this finish. I've changed into the links directory. I've run Mix Phoenix Server to compile the application, and now all I need to do is run my migrations, and I'm going to do that this time by just clicking on the link. So now we're ready to go. All I need to do is bring up my editor in the links directory. So what a typical link does, whether it's one of these buttons or an HTML link, is send a request, and then the web server packages up a response and sends it back to the client. But when we have an interactive live view, that's not going to be enough because we don't want to trigger a whole page load. We only want to fill in the differences, but we still want to maintain code organization and browser history so that we could maintain a good experience for the end user and for the developer. And that's why there's a feature called live navigation. So let's look for Phoenix live view. And there's the hex documentation for it. And let's look for navigation. And there's live navigation right there. And so this is what we're after. And, and I'm going to paraphrase the documentation a little bit. If we maintain the href attribute, just like you'd find on a typical anchor HTML component, it's going to work just like it did before. In this case, it would just send a HTTP request to what's, what's pointed to in this verified URL. So that's typically not what we want in a live view application. What we'd like is to maintain the integrity of the single page application. And so I'm going to use a different attribute called patch. Now, what Patch does is if I am in the same LiveView application or LiveView module, all it's going to do is skip the mount and give me a new constructor that I can use to establish the state for this round. And then it'll leave everything else in the socket. It'll leave the page intact and only render the changes based on what I do in within my LiveView. And this event is going to come in not as a handle event, as we have with a button, but as a handle params. And we're going to implement an application with a handle params and a render. And we really want to see what happens to the overall life cycle when I use a live patch or its close cousin, a navigate. And in this case, what I'm looking for is something that is going to reestablish the state in my live view, but leave the connection up and leave everything else the same so that I get a performance benefit, but I get something that works a lot like a fresh page change and an efficient one at that because I don't have to do the two cycle, you know, the first bringing down the entire text page and then second connecting and then processing the live view loop. So we have three different types of, of links, if you will. We have the original recipe, and that's the one that's going to do request response. That's done with a standard href, just like anchor links have. We have the live patch that is on the extreme end, and all that's going to do is trigger a new handler, but this time a handle params that can change data in the socket. And then we have a live navigate, and the navigate is going to be between the two, if you will. It's going to maintain the connection, but it's going to recall mount on the individual client and then force down whatever changes that I have when I render. So let's see how all of that works. Okay, so let's start to write some code. What we'd like to do is within Lynx Web, we want to build a new page called follows to kind of see what's happening. So it's going to be live when I follow a link. So this is going to be follow live 
and I don't need the live action here. That's really some more information about the individual click. And we really don't know very much information about the click. And so this is going to build me, or it's going to track a click into linksweb.followlive. So I can go ahead here within linksweb. I can give me a new folder. Oh no, this is just going to be live. And then I can build a new file within here, follow live.ex. So I'm going to say def module. So links web follow live. And all we want to do is get just the skinniest little live view working that we can. So I'm going to say use links web live view. And then I'm going to say def render. And then I'm going to return a Heeks template with a here doc that says nothing but And I'll close this out. So now I should be able to say follow. Oh, and it shows uh, linksweb.follow live live as an undefined module. So let's see what's going on there. It's because I didn't save it. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now I'm getting into the hello world. So we're off the ground. And before I do anything else, let's just go ahead and build that default mount. So you can see what that looks like. So this is a params. That's a URL parameters that come through in the session. And then the socket. We don't need either of the first two, but we're going to need the socket because we're going to return that. And right now the socket is going to be empty. But as we start tracking links, what we want to do is say is start to build a list of what the user or which callbacks have fired. So um, we're going to go ahead and track those through the, the whole life cycle, at least the handlers and the, um, and the mount, and see what that looks like within this route. So we're, we're effectively going to build a preview that kind of shows what happens when we follow links. So that way we'll be able to tell what happens when the user clicks on any individual link. And so we're going to start that process next. Okay, so things are going well. I think that what we need to start doing is collecting some data. So let's do that in an external function called follow. And I should take the socket and then whatever data that I want to keep So the first thing to do is say the follows So I want to get whatever's in socket assigns cuz we're going to tack on to that list of follows and if there's nothing in there I want to start with an empty list and then what I want to do is return assign the socket and then the follows and then whatever's in the the follows list and then just append whatever the data is right so now what i could do is just keep a running pipe of things that i want to do because i have my crc that i'm kind of working through the mount right so this is the socket is basically created by the constructor of Phoenix Live View itself. And then I can just reduce down all the things that I want to do at once. And right now I want to follow and I want to pass some additional data. Let's just pass the list of data or maybe a tuple that has what the function is. 
And then not just what the function is, but also whether we're connected. Right, and just because I wanna see this develop slowly, I'm going to add a sleep here. And let's do like 300 milliseconds, just about a third of a second. I think that that'd be fine. So I'm gonna save that much, but I'm also going to show this. Right now, let's just have a, an ugly user interface that just inspects whatever's in there. So I'm going to say inspect the, and that's it. So let's see what happens as we run this program. Up, oh, I use map.get1, so that probably means I didn't specify the target. So map.get socket assigns, yeah, we didn't specify a key. We want to pull the follows out of there, right? So essentially what we're saying is that if there's already a list in there, use that one because we want to build on it over time. If not, start a new one. And we have to do all of this to kind of track what's happening because sometimes I'm gonna be connected. And if I'm connected, I can continue to keep track of everything that's in the socket. If not, I'm gonna get that second run through mount and that's going to clean everything out of my socket the second time through. So let's take a look at what's happening on the page. Okay, so I'm gonna reload this. This is showing me mount and true. So we expect this live view to be connected, but we also, when I hit reload, we should expect to see that connected go to false. Yeah, did you see it blink to false? So what happened was the first pass through, we weren't connected yet. We returned the text of the page. Then the JavaScript that was on the page fired, made a connection to the socket, and now we're in the event loop. And so what the rest of this video should show you is what happens when we process the individual links. And we're going to start that work next. So we're in the Phoenix documentation and the first type of link that I wanna follow is the traditional link. And the second one, well, I can grab these at the same time. And the second one is the patch. So let's go ahead and drop those into our application. So in the render, so we'll have the traditional, and this is gonna be follow. I don't need any of that. And what this piece sigil does is verifies the link. And so let's, let's call this HTTP, right? And let's call this a patch. And this is going to go to the same place, isn't it? And this is going to break, but that's good. That's okay because we haven't implemented that handle params yet. But this will tell us what we need to do. And then there's a redirect. And remember. The job of a href is to maintain a traditional link. The job of a patch is to maintain the state of our live view, which means we shouldn't go through mount again. And the job of a redirect is to maintain the connection, but force us to go through mount again. And let's see if that's actually what happens. So we're gonna save this much. And then we're going to see our application. So this is HTTP link. Did you see that false true blink? So we, we ran disconnected again, we ran connected, and then we, we flipped back to this page. And so what you should see if you're actually tracing the network traffic is that it downloaded the text of the first page and then it downloaded only the differences, in our case, this little piece of data. And when we click patch, what we should see, we shouldn't see this mount true go off again, right? What we should see is this should break and tell us that we haven't implemented that.
the handle params yet. Yeah, do you see the crash? So it's telling us that we have not yet implemented the handle params. So if we go here to the log, yep, and it says, Links Web, followed live, that's our module. It says handle params three is undefined or private, right? And so this is the data that we got in. These are the parameters because, well, we didn't have any URL parameters. This is the, the full URL that was followed. And then I get a socket. And so we're going to implement that function next. So let's start our design by crash. <laughs> So all we're going to do is sweep out this function. And then we're going to implement that function here. So I'm going to say def, and then I get the handle params. And that's just what was called before. And so these are the parameters. If I had URL parameters, they would be in a map there. Here's the URL that was clicked. But since I don't need that either, I'm going to just paste that here. And then I'm going to say, this is my socket. And then this is going to be a no reply. And I'm going to assign the socket. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Sometimes I like to say socket and just basically pipe to my follow. And my follow, remember, takes this, this tuple thing that looks something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that off. And I'm going to add that tuple. But this is going to be a handle params and the connected. Okay, and let's see what happens now. So I'm going to go ahead and um, so I have these three types of, of links. But let's go ahead and add a little bit of separation in there. So all I'm going to do is drop in a horizontal rule. I know that that's old school HTML, but you know sometimes it, it helps us with a rapid prototype. And then I'm going to say, so I've got my handle params. So handle params actually fired. So we got mount first, and then we got handle params next. In order to make these occur in the right order, we're adding to the head. Let's go ahead and tweak this. Tweak this code to actual, actually um, take this. I'm going to take the follows and then I'm going to pipe that into enum dot reverse to get it in the right order. Then I'm going to pipe that much into, what do we want, inspect, like that. So let's see if that's any better. Okay, yeah, so I got mount first, then I got handle params. But when I reload this, I get a mount false and then handle params. And if I click an HTTP, I'm going to get the false, true, and then handle params. And if I click the patch, that's going to add a handle params and that's going to maintain the integrity of the socket. I didn't run through a disconnected mount. I didn't run through a connected mount. I got the handle params again, this time the second one after I click the link. And what happens if I click the redirect? So I just clicked the redirect and I didn't get anything. So I bet that's because my link isn't shaped correctly. Let's see what I should expect what that should look like. So that is a patch and this is a patch. Let's see, what are the other kinds? So href navigate. Okay, navigate is the other one that I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and update this code to look like this. And rather than redirect, this is going to be navigate. So I'm going to save that. I'm going back here. Looks like we've reloaded again. 
but let's just reload. You saw the false flash and true, and then we got the handle params. And then we got the, we're now we're in the event loop. And if we click patch, I'm going to go ahead and maintain the integrity of the socket and add an additional handle params. And every time that I click this patch, it's going to maintain everything. And what's happening is LiveView is only updating the things on the page that need to change. It's not calling mount at all. So this is the best I can do in terms of performance. But sometimes I need to reestablish what's in the socket and come back with a clean state. And when that's what's happening, I'm going to use a redirect instead. So I'm going to click on the redirect and that did a navigate. And notice, I never see this flash to false. So I maintain the connected state. So this is the second best thing that I can do in terms of performance. I'm just going to hold on to whatever's on the page and update whatever changes. And so what I'm allowed to do now is decide what the best link policy is based on the needs of my page. I can opt for higher performance or I can opt for a full page reload to cycle or only the cycle of the, of the connected live view. And that gives me excellent flexibility for my application to do exactly what it wants to do. And it allows me the capability of organizing my code by wrapping things up into separate live views and still maintaining the integrity of the URL following and of the code organization, and that's an excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.